Our journey begins with the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages was a period in time following the decline of the Roman Empire, where a cultural and economic deterioration occurred in Western Europe. During this time, texts from classical antiquity were lost or destroyed, but some survived hidden in churches and monasteries in lands to the east. But by the 14th century, many of the surviving classical texts were copied and slowly introduced back into Western Europe, starting a momentous movement that inspired a hunger for knowledge and art and marked the beginning of the Renaissance and the modern age. Fast forward to today, NASA is the contemporary embodiment and the continuation of the spirit of that movement long ago. Yet, you may have heard the following statements before, or you may even think them yourself. First is, we spend too much on NASA, and we can't justify that kind of spending right now. And second is, why spend money on space when we can spend the money for things here on Earth? On the surface, these sentiments are practical and sensible. But not only is NASA affordable, we can't afford not to spend on NASA. NASA is not even as expensive as you might think. According to the Huffington Post, there were public opinion polls that show that Americans on average believe that NASA takes up 20% of the US budget. But NASA's budget only takes up 0.47% of the budget. That's less than a half of a penny of every dollar you pay in taxes. But what about the Apollo program? How much of the US budget did it take to go to the moon? Surely it was at least 20% during that time, right? Well, President Kennedy made his famous We Choose to Go to the Moon speech in 1962, and we landed on the moon in 1969. During that span of time, the highest percentage was just 4.4% in 1966. Now let's go back to that half of a penny of every tax dollar. Inside that half of a penny lies a nest of economic and technological prosperity. According to professor of aeronautics and astronautics at Stanford University, G. Scott Hubert, for every dollar we spend on the space program, the US economy receives about $8 of economic benefit in return. Based on that estimate, the $19.5 billion we spent on NASA last year will eventually amount to $156 billion back into our economy. That's $25 billion more than Amazon's revenue in 2016. Okay, so what does this return to the economy look like? Well, a space program requires pushing the boundaries of what humanity is capable of. And in order to explore the final frontier, NASA must develop technologies in a wide variety of fields. NASA is mandated by Congress to transfer technology that it gains to the private sector. There are many, many commercial products and even whole industries that exist because of technology developed by NASA. NASA calls them spin-off technologies, which are commercial products and services which have been developed with the help of NASA. For example, the next time you see a sweet pair of Nike LeBron 15s with those sweet air pockets, you can thank NASA for that. You see, the technology behind those air pockets was developed by NASA in the early 1980s and the process was called blow rubber molding. After the establishment of the molding process, a former NASA engineer pitched the idea for an air pocket to Nike, which led to the Nike Air. Another example, if you're fortunate enough to have a Tempur-Pedic mattress or any other mattress made out of memory foam, you can thank NASA for that as well. Memory foam was developed at NASA's Ames Research Center to improve crash protection material. And now it's used in a variety of ways from mattresses to sports safety equipment to amusement park rides. You can also thank NASA the next time you take a picture with your smartphone or if you record videos with a GoPro camera. You see, digital imaging sensor technology traces back to NASA scientist Eric Fossum, who wanted to develop miniaturized cameras for interplanetary missions. Fossum came up with the technique that resulted in a clearer image that led to the sensors used today in smartphones everywhere. These commercial products are just three of many, many spin-off technologies from NASA. NASA produces so many spin-offs they maintain a whole website and an annual publication based off those spin-offs. The spin-off publication started in 1976, and since then, NASA has profiled almost 2,000 spin-off technologies, including 3D food printers, infrared ear thermometers, artificial limbs, space blankets that you see in first aid kits, scratch-resistant lenses, pretty much all modern firefighting equipment, 
portable cordless vacuums, water filters, enriched baby food, and the list goes on and on and on. But something that is commonly thought to be a NASA spinoff actually is not, and that is Tang. Tang was developed in 1957, one year before NASA was formed, but it was used on several missions which brought awareness to the brand. Anyway, as you can see, NASA does so much for society with such a little piece of the US budget. Let's illustrate just how small NASA funding is in the grand scheme of things. Here's a pie chart of the 2017 budget from nationalpriorities.org. You can't find NASA, can you? That's because NASA's budget is so small, they lumped it in that blue piece right here with the rest of science spending at $32 billion. So let's go ahead and add NASA's piece here at $19.5 billion and at 0.47% of the budget. And as we slowly zoom out, we can see how NASA is merely a drop in the bucket. That yellow sliver lies a continuation of the Renaissance movement that inspires a hunger for knowledge. That sliver lies economic and technological prosperity of possible products and devices that haven't even been thought of yet or only exist in the realm of science fiction. Let me end this with an incredible thought. Of all the benefits NASA brings to the economy and all the advancements it provides, with NASA, we get to explore space as an added bonus. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you want to know how cool life will be like in the future, join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe, and see you on our next journey.